This is the third part of our finite element analysis of a spherical pressure vessel with a cylindrical nozzle. In the first part, we have done a two-dimensional axismetric analysis. And in the second part, we have done a three-dimensional solid analysis. Now, we are interested in doing the same analysis using uh, shell-type elements. So we just need uh, the surfaces defining the midplane of the solid model. We used this uh, 3D model in the second part to create our solid model. And in many cases, you may be given a three-dimensional model uh, based uh, on a solid model. And if you wanted to analyze this as a shell, one of the tools ANSYS Workbench gives you is the mid-surface tool. So if you use the tools mid-surface, face pairs, we will need to select the first phase and then select the second. So the first phase is purple and the second phase is um, pink. So we'll need to continue that to the second pair as well. So that's again purple and pink and Workbench can automatically detect the mid-surface. So if we click on Apply, we'll leave the thickness tolerances and sewing tolerances automatic, which looked OK. And um, it will not allow variable thickness. Extra trimming is not relevant here. And preserve bodies is no, so it will delete the solid model and we can click on generate and it will give us a mid-plane uh, surface so you can find that under one part one body we have ended with a, a single surface body so we'll start using this in our uh, mechanical model we have now reset mechanical in project schematic and started mechanical and we can see that our geometry is transferred as a surface body and we'll need to create a mesh for this uh, and it'll be a shell type mesh so the first thing we can do is check that the thickness is defined as 20 millimeters that's that's fine and under mesh we can put the sizing control just to uh, define the basic size for this And the element size we can define as, um, let's say, 4 millimeters. This is a fairly fine mesh for a shell model. The elements are relatively small for the thickness direction. So we will, however, go with this uh, size and see what the results are. Under static structural analysis, we'll need to define our pressure boundary conditions and supports. So in terms of supports, we can specify displacements on the edges. So we'll need to select the edge selection tool and select the edges on the ZY plane. And we'll need to constrain them in the X direction. And we'll also need to select the edges on the XY plane. And apply a constraint in the Z direction. Another one we can do is um, fix the top of the nozzle in the Y direction. A couple of other uh, boundary conditions that we'll need to add are on the sides of this quarter symmetric model where the symmetry faces are. We'll need to also constrain some rotations. And we can do that again under supports. 
and fixed rotation. So the face on YZ uh, will be free to rotate in X. So I will need to constrain um, Y and Z, so they are fixed. But we'll need to free the X rotation. And we'll also need to do a similar symmetry boundary condition. the other symmetry phase. So we'll need to constrain that, fix rotation, and that will be free in rotating Z. So that's going to be free. So that defines the boundary conditions, the um, displacement and rotation boundary conditions on this shell structure. And what we can do now is we can apply the pressure boundary condition. And for that, we need to select the face. And the pressure we want to apply was 1 megapascals. So that's our model ready to solve. We can add a couple of uh, results items under solution and then hit solve. So now we have our equivalent stresses um, on the shell structure. Um, we can turn off thick shell and beam uh, viewing so you can see that they are actually um, modeled as thin shells um, but when you turn on the actual thickness it looks more like a 3d model so the maximum value we can see on this model is again near the uh, intersection between the cylindrical and spherical um, parts and that's about 8.4 megapascals and if you remember in the um, 2D axis metric and the 3D models, that value was about 10.6 megapascals. So, so the shell model is definitely um, underestimating the stress at the intersection. And the total deformation plot, and what we can do is um, just do uh, an animation to see how the structure is displacing. Again, the maximum displacements are just a fraction of a millimeter. So it's a relatively strong vessel. So these are stresses and displacements due to one megapascals of load. And the question was, how do we find the maximum pressure that this vessel can take up to the elastic limit of the material? So if we uh, look at the stresses again, that's 8.4. Um, the pressure will be uh, 300 megapascals scaled with 8.4. And so the shell model predicts. 35.56 megapascal load that will take this uh, structure to the elastic limit and this is certainly not conservative in this case because the 3D model has shown us that, that the intersection of the, uh, the cylindrical nozzle and the uh, spherical shell has a higher stress concentration at the intersection point. However the Shell analysis will give you still good results on the shell uh, membrane and banding type stresses um, on both the spherical and the cylindrical sections here on this model. Um, and it will get more and more accurate as um, the overall 
thickness of the structure is less compared to the other dimensions. So for thinner structures, you should get a better convergence between uh, a 3D model and a shell type model. For very detailed stress concentration type problems, a solid model or a 2D axis metric model will be more suitable. So this concludes our three-part um, analysis of a spherical vessel with a cylindrical nozzle.